Gospel reading and homily for the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The tax collectors and the sinners were all seeking the company of Jesus to hear what he had to say, and the Pharisees and scribes complained. This man, they said, welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he spoke this parable to them. What man among you with a hundred sheep would, losing one, would not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the missing one till he found it? And when he found it, would he not joyfully take it on his shoulders and then, when he got home, call together his friends and neighbours? Rejoice with me, he would say, I have found my sheep that was lost. In the same way, I tell you, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one repentant sinner than over ninety-nine virtuous men who have no need of repentance. Or again, what woman with ten drachmas would not, if she lost one, light a lamp and sweep out the house and search thoroughly till she found it? And when she had found it, call together her friends and neighbours. Rejoice with me, she would say, I have found the drachma I lost. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing among the angels of God over one repentant sinner. He also said, A man had two sons. The younger said to his father, Father, let me have the share of the estate that would come to me. So the father divided the property between them. A few days later, the younger son got together everything he had and left for a distant country where he squandered his money on a life of debauchery. When he had spent it all, that country experienced a severe famine, and now he began to feel the pinch. So he hired himself out to one of the local inhabitants who put him on his farm to feed the pigs, and he would willingly have filled his belly with the husks the pigs were eating, but no one offered him anything. Then he came to his senses and said, how many of my father's paid servants have more food than they want? And here am I, dying of hunger. I will leave this place and go to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as one of your paid servants. So he left the place and he went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, the father saw him and was moved with pity. He ran to the boy, clasped him in his arms, and kissed him tenderly. Then his son said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But the father said to the servants, Quick, bring out the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his finger and sandal on his feet. Bring the calf we've been fattening and kill it. We are going to have a celebration, a feast, because this son of mine was dead and he's come back to life. He was lost and he's found. And they began to celebrate. Now the elder son was out in the fields and on his way back, as he drew near the house, he could hear music and dancing. Calling one of the servants, he asked what it was all about. Your brother has come, replied the servant. Your father has killed the calf we'd been fattening because he has got him back safe and sound. He was angry, and he refused to go in, and his father came out to plead with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I have slaved for you and never once disobeyed your orders, yet you never offered me so much as a kid for me to celebrate with my friends. But as for this son of yours, when he comes back after swallowing up your property, he and his women, you killed the calf we'd been fattening. The father said, My son, you are with me always, and all I have is yours. But it was only right we should celebrate and rejoice, because your brother here was dead and has come back to life. He was lost and is found. The Gospel of the Lord. There was a program on the telly recently about mums and dads who walked out on their family. 
One dad had split from his family while his three children were still very young. The interviewer asked him if he was sorry and would he ask their forgiveness now that they were young adults. His reply was, why should I? Having come to his senses, the tearaway prodigal declared, I will leave this place and go to my father. Now, we could ask ourselves the question, is there any place which we need to leave? Is there anything we need to turn away from? Is there any person we need to put things right with as a precondition for receiving the mercy of God? The Father is always waiting for us to return and will never turn his back on us even though our sin has brought misery to other people. St. Paul stresses this in the second reading today. Jesus came into the world to save sinners, he said. I myself am the greatest of them, and if mercy has been shown me, it's because Jesus meant to make me the evidence of his infinite patience. God is patient with us, and he keeps offering us opportunities to repent, but it's easy to come up with excuses not to. David, in the Old Testament, is another example of God's patience. He stole Uriah's wife and then had him sent into battle where the fighting was fiercest so that he would not survive the onslaught, which is precisely what happened. David was guilty of infidelity and murder, but after pouring out his soul to God in heartfelt sorrow, he was forgiven despite the gravity of his sins. Remember Jesus was not ashamed to be called son of David, even after what David had done. So what may be stopping us from drinking deeply from the wellspring of his mercy? It says in the Bible, his mercy endures forever. And Saint Teresa said, our sins are like a drop of water dropped into a blazing furnace, and the furnace is that of God's mercy. The prodigal could have stayed immersed in his misery and miss out on the Father's forgiveness. Now, I know a lot of people don't believe in purgatory, but it's still part of the church teaching. But I would say that the pain of purgatory will be in the form of regrets by bypassing opportunities for repentance while still in this present world. However, the elder son has a goody-goody two-shoes in the story. He doesn't come across in a very good light either. This part of the story was directed at the self-righteous Pharisees who had little time for the weak and the sinful. They even accused Jesus of pandering to sinners, and that comes across in today's gospel. But Jesus reminded them that it is not the healthy who need the doctor, but the sick. Like the elder brother who outwardly kept all the rules, love of the law blinded the Pharisees to the law of love. The father went out of his way to forgive his wayward son when he put his past behind him. This is in stark contrast to the disgruntled elder brother who couldn't find any room in his heart to welcome home his own flesh and blood. We don't want to be like him. The father loved his elder son no more than the prodigal, no less sorry, I should say, than the prodigal. He reassured him that everything he owned would eventually be his. What more could he have hoped for? I suppose, come to think of it, there are at times a bit of the prodigal and the elder brother in all of us. The only thing which never changes is the Father's mercy, which is freely given to those humble enough to desire it. Thank you all for listening, and God bless you all.